I loved this film as a kid. So going back to it as an adult brought back so many memories, which I'm so glad for. That being said, it's not a perfect film. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is a 1989 American science fiction comedy film directed by Stephen Herrick and written by Chris Matheson and Ed Solomon. The film stars Keanu Reeves, Alex Winter and George Carlin and the plot follows slacker friends Bill and Ted who travel through time to assemble historical figures for the Heist 4 presentation. When the film was released it received generally positive reviews and was a success at the box office grossing $40 million against a $6 million budget. But that being said, the film is not perfect and there are things wrong with it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. 10 things that could make Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure better. Number 10, ripping off Doctor Who. Now, as regular viewers of my show are aware, I am a huge fan of, you guessed it, Doctor Who. So of course, I'm always gonna make comparisons from this film to Doctor Who, especially as when this film came out, Doctor Who was still running. Now people were gonna say, well, it's a phone box in a time machine, so what? That's not the only thing though. If you think about it, at the beginning of the film, they actually physically changed a block into a phone machine, just like the TARDIS does in Doctor Who. It's supposed to have a communion circuit, doesn't work, but still. And obviously the main thing of a TARDIS inside is the central column, just like in the phone booth in this film, it has a central column on top of the phone box. There's so many different things, especially taking liberties with historical events, like Doctor Who does, they do in this film as well. There are so many things from Doctor Who that are in this film. Yeah, you can see where this list is going today, can't you? Number nine, mum name. So Bill's dad, has a girlfriend or wife who's only a couple of years older than Bill and Ted, which is quite cool, especially if you're a middle-aged man having a hot young girlfriend. Yeah, anyway, but that's not the issue. The fact that she makes this kid who's only a couple of years younger than her call her mum. That bit, no, doesn't. it's not right at all. Okay, yes, I have a hot girlfriend. She's the same age as me. I have a hot girlfriend. She has a daughter, but I don't make her call me dad. She calls me Scott. Uh, or other names as well, but we'll leave that off camera. But yeah, why does she might insist on calling, making Bill call her mum? It doesn't make sense. But that wasn't the worst thing she did. Number eight, kids room. Yeah, Missy goes one step too far. So Missy and Bill's dad, they get it on. They get the, you know, whatever you want to call it, the jiggly path, whatever in Bill's bedroom. Say what? I'll tell you something, if my mum had humped in my bedroom when I was living there, I would have gone mental. Your kids' rooms are off limits. No, you do not do that at all. I'm making this sound like more of a porno than a good film. Number seven, doomed to fail. Well, we've picked on Bill's parents. Now let's look at Ted's dad. He keeps saying, if you fail your history exam, you're going to a military school in Alaska. Okay, that I actually get, it's strict punishment, fine. But that's not the problem. The fact is, Ted's dad is acting like he's failed before he's done the exam. He has actually said, he quotes, you failed your exam. No, he hasn't. How can he fail it when he hasn't taken it? You're making him fail. Bad parenting, bad, 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 bad. I mean, at least give the kid a chance. I mean, look, he actually did it. He passed his exam. Oops, spoilers. But still, Ted's dad was like saying, you're gonna fail, you're gonna fail, you're gonna fail. No wonder this kid's a slacker. Number six, burn marks. So yeah, Bill and Ted have these awesome time machines based on phone boxes, which a lot of kids nowadays won't know what phone boxes are. Now, one of the first things you actually get to see is actually when the future Bill and Ted come, and talk to present day Bill and Ted. This film's confusing as it is. And when they leave, they leave a burn mark on the concrete outside the Circle K. Yet, the rest of the film, every time the phone box leaves, there's no burn marks. Even on grass, there's no burn marks. It only happens once in the entire film. 
Yeah, yeah, why? Could you not afford it? Well, yeah, it was a cheap film, but still. Number five, Trading Places. I'm not talking about the awesome Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy film. I'm actually talking about the characters all trading places in the phone box. Now, this is down to bad editing. It's probably the biggest bad editing in the whole film, and it's probably because it was a cheap film. But every time they get in the phone box, they go in the phone box in one order. And then when the camera goes to it, they're all everywhere else. And then when the camera goes back in the same scene, they're in different places. Literally every single time you look at that phone box, they're in different positions. Especially as it's Bill at the back of the phone booth, actually dialing the number, then he's at the front. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very inconsistent there. Number four, Iron Maiden. Now, I'm bringing this one up from when I was a kid. Now I'm an adult, I sort of get this. But as a kid, enjoying this film, the king goes to Bill and Ted and says, put them in the Iron Maiden. And they go, Anthem. Okay, why are they so happy? Well, they're thinking about the band Iron Maiden, which is cool. Except the king wasn't. He was talking about a real Iron Maiden. Now this begs the question, what is an Iron Maiden? Now at this time, I actually thought, and I humiliated myself at school, because the next thing he says, execute them, and they're about to have their heads chopped off. And I actually thought that was what Iron Maiden was. So at school, in senior school, what's an Iron Maiden? I gave the answer and I got laughed at. Cheers, Bill and Ted. Now this is an Iron Maiden. They didn't even show that in this film, they just wanted a cheap gag at the band, which is a cool band, which is fair enough, but still, at least show a real Iron Maiden. Number three, bowling. Bowling is such an enjoyable pastime. I enjoy it, I like going out bowling with my family, but every time we go there, you go to the booth, you pay your money, you play your game. That's how it works. Well, that's how it works in the UK. So that's why I'm picking this up, because they go, they play, and then the owner says, you haven't paid. Do you not pay beforehand in America? Because in the UK, we pay first, so no issues. You don't play, then pay, you pay, then play. That's how it works. And I wonder if Americans messed up a bit. But still, that doesn't make sense for a UK side of things. Number two, high school smoking. Well. Starting in the 80s and getting bigger and bigger in the 90s, and now it's just completely wrong today. Smoking is bad for your health. That's what you're told ever since I was a kid. Smoking is bad for your health. So why does everybody in San Dimas High School have a lighter? You are just promoting... Bear in mind, this is going to be watched by teenagers and kids, and everyone has a lighter. They're putting it up at the end of the show. That means they're all smoking. You just actively promoted smoking at the end of the 80s. Whoops! Number one, Led Zeppelin. Before anyone shoots me, I'm not actually going to say Led Zeppelin is a bad band. I come from a family of music lovers. They would actually castrate me, hung me, draw me, and quarter me. So, no, Led Zeppelin, great. That wasn't the issue. The issue with this is at the end of the film, in their big presentation, Bill turns around and says, this guy comes from a place that looks like Led Zeppelin's Houses of the Holy, which is this album cover. Wrong. Wrong album. Bad film. Wrong album. The album you're actually looking for is Led Zeppelin 4, which looks like this. That's what you meant. Whoops. That was, that was a big boo-boo there. Should not have done that, especially as these are supposed to be huge heavy rocker bands. You would have known that, but no, you messed that one up. Final thoughts. What can I say about this film? I mean, if you've watched to this part of the video, you've known I have just nitpicked. There's nothing majorly bad about this film. In fact, it is such an enjoyable, fun film. As I said in my intro, I loved this film as a kid. Going back to it as an adult, I still thoroughly enjoyed it, and it's made me want to watch the sequel, Bill and Ted Face the Music, even more when it comes out on the 23rd of August. So I'm actually looking forward to that. That's why I've done this video. But that being said, 
The only problem is it's only for a certain type of people. It's not going to be bothered by older generation. It's not going to make the younger generation of today excited for this film, especially female. It's going to be for stupid, immature little teenage boys. Just like I was back then. But this film is still a good film, especially between the chemistry between Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves. Those two are what make this film. Their timing with each other is fantastic. You can actually see their friendship through the camera lenses. It's just brilliant. They are what make this film. And yeah, especially as they were discovered doing this sort of thing outside McDonald's. That's how they were discovered. They were actually being Bill and Ted outside. So you actually know that they're not actually acting, they're being themselves around each other, which is why their relationship works, and that's what makes this film great. But the fact is, there's no overall bad guy. It's like, it's a school report. There's no world ending we have to say. It's just brilliant. And I like it because of that. It's very toned down. It's one of these films you can just sit down, sit back, enjoy. And sometimes you need that. As I said, the only issue is, it's not a film for the entire family. Now I'm lucky, my girlfriend enjoys this film, but my uh, girlfriend's daughter, no, she didn't really like it. She just thought it was silly, especially with everyone going, excellent. So what am I going to rank this film? Only purely because it's not a full family film, but ultimately I love this film. I'm actually going to give it nine out of 10 berries. I can't give it a 10. If it was for the entire family, I probably would have given it a 10, but then it would probably ruin the entire film and would have gone down. See, it's very confusing doing these ratings. I wish I'd known that before I started the series, but hey ho. So that was what I think of this film. What do you think? Write your comments below. And I love reading your comments, so please put your review in the comments below. But let's, so what am I going to do next week? Well, this week we had an excellent adventure, but next week we're gonna have a bonus journey. That's an easy thing, you should get that one. But if you wanna keep in touch with me, I'm on social networking at Berryman81 on both Twitter and Facebook, so just go search me up if you want to get in touch with me. And so please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that like button, and also please share with your friends and get the word out there. And after that, I'll see you next week. But I'm going to leave you with this sincere message be excellent to each other. And party on, dudes!